Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another dynasty video. This time we're going to be looking at the Mefrit dynasty. We're going to be looking at their unique abilities from the dynasty code, as well as some of the perks that you get when playing the Mefrit dynasty itself. And then on top of that, we're going to be doing our top three Necron units that I believe are best when you're using the Mefrit dynasty itself. Like with the previous videos, we're going to have an honorable mention from one of our paid YouTube members. So stick around for that one. And as always, if you haven't checked out the membership, just click the join button for more information. Okay, so let's get on with the Mefrit dynasty. They have got Solar Fury. So you're going to be adding three inches to the range characteristics of your range weapons. Now that does not include pistols. Then further to add, if you're firing at half range, the AP of the weapon will increase by one. Now this time that will include your pistols, it's just the first bullet point that doesn't include pistols there. Then finally, the Protocol of Vengeful Stars, when you're using that one and it becomes active for your army, army-wide you're going to have both the directives for that command protocol. So what is that Protocol of Vengeful Stars? Well, Directive 1, at range, any unmodified wound rolls of a 6 will improve the AP by 1. That kind of already stacks with the actual Dynasty code itself, firing at half range, getting an extra AP. So if you're firing at half range and you roll a wound roll of a 6, you're actually going to get minus 2 AP there. Then Directive 2, each time you make a ranged attack and then within half range, the enemy unit does not receive the benefits of cover. Okay, so let's get on to some of the unique stuff that's in the Mephrit Dynasty. So first of all, the Warlord trait, Merciless Tyrant. Kind of doesn't feel like a Mephrit Dynasty Warlord trait, I've always said this, but... So it is based on melee, and you're adding one to the strength and attack characteristics of your Warlord. So maybe if you've got a Warlord that's kind of screening off your backline, maybe you've got a Scorpic Lord for example, he's going to really benefit. Maybe a Catacomb Command Barge as well. Now the Stratagem is Talent for Annihilation, it's a pretty good one in fact. One Command Point, in the shooting phase you select your Mephrit unit... Then until the end of that phase, each time a mod in the unit makes an attack, an unmodified wound roll of a 6 inflicts a mortal wound. And that's on top of the damage. Now it is capped at 3 mortal wounds per phase. But just remember with the command protocol, if you roll a 6 to wound, you're also improving the AP by 1 as well. So 6s are actually pretty powerful in the Mephric Dynasty. We'll kind of talk about this strategy more as we get on into the video. Now the Relic is the Conduit of Stars, this only relates to the Royal Warden because he's the only one with the Relic Gorse Blaster. So it's a 36 inch range which will of course go to 39 inch range because it's the Mephrit Dynasty. Rapid Fire 3, Strength 6, minus 2 AP and 2 damage. It's a pretty decent weapon. Whenever I do take a Royal Warden in the Mephrit Dynasty, I try my best to take this because it's not often that you get characters that can actually fire ranged weapons. They've normally got melee weapons, but yeah, this one's pretty good. Unless you're taking the Veil of Darkness Relic with your Royal Warden, that's a different story. So let's actually get on to the top three. Now this is just my opinion. If you do disagree with my opinion, just put it down in the comments below. Everybody's got their own way of playing. Now if you do come across the Mephrit Dynasty, the units that you're likely going to be seeing are of course shooty units. So you're going to be seeing lots of Warriors, Tomb Blades, Immortals, Hexmark Destroyers, Death Marks. Even your Canoptic Spiders because they've got the Compartical Beamers. And then any of those buffing characters such as a Royal Warden or a Scorpic Lord. They're the kind of units you're going to see when going up against the Mephrit Dynasty. Now as for my third selection today, so in third place, I've gone with a Royal Warden. And I'll explain my reasoning. So first of all, the Adaptive Strategy ability, of course, that's the main reason you're taking a Royal Warden. In your command phase, a friendly core unit within 9 inches, that's virtually the whole codex now. Everything's got core. And then until the end of the turn the unit is eligible to shoot and declare a charge in a turn in which they fell back. So quite important to note the fact that they can also declare a charge and not just fall back and shoot because sometimes you want to actually fall back, shoot and maybe to protect your unit you can actually go back in and recharge that way they can't be targeted at range. Now you may be wondering, well the Royal Warden isn't as useful as it used to be because our command protocol's got a revamp with that data slate update. Now specifically with the protocol of conquering Tyrant Directive 2, we do have the option of falling back and still shooting. So there are three negatives when using this command protocol as opposed to a Royal Warden. The first one we've just already mentioned, you can't actually charge after falling back. The second is the minus one to the hit rolls. And third of all, we are still quite limited with our command protocols. If you want your army-wide protocol which lasts all game and you select a Conquering Tyrant, then that prevents you from selecting other options such as Protocol of Sudden Storm, maybe you wanted to be doing actions and still firing your ranged weapons, or even the Vengeful Stars, which is the Mephrit Dynasty one itself. So you've either got to select the Conquering Tyrant over those other options, or you've got to time it correctly. Maybe you've got it in turn 2, turn 3, you've got to time it perfectly, because of course you need to pre-select your command protocols before the game actually begins, unless you've got the Silent King, but that's a whole different ball game right there. Now as for his weapon, which I've kind of already briefly touched upon when we spoke about the Relics, He's got the Relic Gorse Blaster, which isn't a Relic, oddly. It is 30 inch range, but it goes to 33. This is their Mephrit Dynasty again. Rapid Fire 2, Strength 5, minus 2 AP and 2 damage. 
So a pretty decent anti-marine kind of weapon. Decent range. The strength is definitely good enough. You're likely wounded on a 3 plus. The AP is also there, especially again at half range. That will go to minus 3 AP. And 2 damage is all you really need. Now if you were to upgrade to that relic as we spoke about already. We've already gone through those stats. Strength 6. Probably don't need strength 6 unless you're going up against toughness 3. But then the damage is a little bit overkill. Or maybe you're going up against Toughness 5 models, Custodies for example. So that Relic can be situational but I do still quite like to take it. What you want to be doing with this guy, if you don't want to take that Relic, is taking the Veil of Darkness Relic and taking them in with a unit of Necron Warriors. Because with those Gorse Reapers, you veil them off 9 inches away from enemy models. And then your Command Phase, you're going to be selecting them to fall back and shoot, fall back and charge or whatever you want to do with them. So you're pretty much guaranteed that they're always going to be able to fire, even if they get tagged in combat in your opponent's turn. Now that's number three, let's get on to number two. I've gone with the Death Marks. I still love the Death Marks, and we're going to go through why they're really good with the Mephrit Dynasty in particular. So they're the sniper options within our Codex. 36 inch range, which goes to 39 inch range. Heavy 1, Shrimp 5, minus 2 AP, 1 damage. Ignores the Lookout Sir ability. And any 6 is to wound, inflict a mortal wound on top of the damage. But again, remember with the Vengeful Stars protocol, wound rolls of a 6 will add to the AP. And also at half range, you're going to get a little bit of extra AP there with the Mephric Dynasty code itself. So these things can actually go to minus 4 AP and be throwing out mortal wounds. Now if you take a unit of 10 of these with 10 shots, because they hit on 2s, you're getting 8.3 hits on average. Going up against Toughness 4 or less, on average you're scoring 5.5 wounds. Now of course they do get their armor saves or their invun saves. And bear in mind there should at least be 1 6 in there with the amount of hits you get. Now if you were to take this against Toughness 5 characters as opposed to Toughness 4, same amount of shots, same amount of hits. It's only 4.1 wounds as opposed to 5.5. But yeah, you've still got the opportunity with sixes, mortal wounds, and all that kind of jazz, which is kind of the main reason for taking death marks. Now you can actually boost that further with a stratagem talent for annihilation, because of course sixes to wound also inflict a mortal wound there as well. Now that is capped at three wounds, but this is going to stack with the actual ability that the death marks have. So every six will now inflict two mortal wounds as opposed to one. Now you could get really lucky and roll a couple of sixes. That's instantly four wounds on a character. So that could be really handy to be getting rid of characters and maybe even score assassination. Now one of the other perks with the death marks is the Aretheic Interception Stratagem for a command point. Used with the Hyperphase Hunter unit, they can follow an enemy unit in within 18 inches of that enemy unit, but more than 9 inches away from enemy models, and they can literally fire as if it was your own shooting phase. Now this death mark unit doesn't actually have to be off the board to actually use this, that's just the first bullet point. The second bullet point literally just says you can shoot as if it was your own shooting phase. So if your death marks are already on the table, you can still use this stratagem and still fire. And there's no 18 inch restriction there because you've got the whole range of your weapon, 39 inches. So definitely make use of that, especially if there's some character models popping in on the battlefield. So that's my number two. Next we're going on to the members honorable mention. Now today's member is going to be Ethan, otherwise known as Stewie in the Discord. And he has selected the Canoptic Spiders. So why has he selected the Canoptic Spiders? Well, he simply said, well, first of all, they get two particle beamers if you upgrade the weapons. Both of them are 18 inch range, which goes to 21 inch range because of course of the Mephrit Solar Fury. Each particle beamer is Assault 6. So that's going to be 12 shots per Canoptic Spider. And the AP will increase if you're at half range as well. That's 10 and a half inches. You're going to get the extra AP for that. And then add the fact that the Protocol of Vengeful Stars is likely going to be active if you're playing the Mephrit Dynasty. Any sixes to wound will improve the AP by one. If you've got a unit of three of these, you're going to get some sixes in there. And also, you're going to be removing the benefits of cover. Now, very similar to the Death Marks, this is a good opportunity to use Talent for Annihilation for a command point. Especially if you've got three Canoptic Spiders, all equipped with the Particle Beamers. Because you're going to have 36 shots. Now you are hitting on 4s, but you're likely going to have 18 hits on average. So if you've got 18 hits on average, so on average you're going to be getting 3 6s to wound there. That's going to be 3 more to wound, which is what the stratagem is actually capped at. Now the best way to actually feel the Canoptic Spiders is by taking the Technomancer, using the Control Node, so that they're going to get a plus 1 to their hit rolls, and also taking that Failsafe Overcharger Arcana on that Technomancer, so they're going to be getting a lot of attacks when they're in melee. It's D3 because they're a monster as opposed to 1. I mean in combat they are pretty decent with their claws. Strength 8, minus 3 AP, 2 damage. They're also toughness 6 with 6 wounds. So what you want to be doing with the Canoptic Spiders is pushing them forward in front of your gun line. Taking out any screens. Taking out anything that's trying to get towards your gun line. Because these things can shoot and they can also fight pretty good as well. 
Now, if you want to further boost the synergy, you're going to be taking the Canoptic Scarabs because you've got the Scarab Hive ability, so you could be bringing back a Scarab every single command phase. And don't forget that Spider is also core, so the Technomancer could actually be bringing one of those back as well. So that's Ethan's selection today. Next, we're going on to my one, which is my top pick from the Mephrit Dynasty. And I can look no further than the Necron Warriors. Now, what you want to be doing is taking a unit of 20 of them. I always advise taking 20 Necron Warriors. Now, unlike with the Celtic Dynasty when you're taking the Gorse Flayers, this time you want to be taking the Gorse Reapers. So that 12 inch range now becomes 15 inch range, and at 7.5 inches, that AP will increase to minus 3 AP. Again, don't forget your protocols, it's quite easy to do. 6 is going to improve the AP by 1, and you're going to be removing cover at half range. Now, the best ways to boost your Necron Warriors is either with the My Will Be Done ability from a Necron Overlord on foot. Or alternatively, you take the Silent King. He's got plenty of abilities, fair enough stars, so you're re-rolling all your hit rolls. Mine will be done, so you'll be hitting on a 2+, plus, and the fair and ability, so you can be doing this on multiple units. And the last piece of unit synergy, we've already kind of mentioned it, but the Royal Warden, being able to fall back and shoot, fall back and charge, it's a really useful combination if you don't want to get your warriors caught in combat, because once they are caught in combat, they've either got to fall back, or they're not shooting at all. Now strategy wise we've already mentioned a few times this video talent for annihilation this is another obvious place to be using that you're very likely going to be scoring three mortal wounds if you were to use this stratagem but they've also got the option of the disintegration capacitor stratagem for a command point because they're gorse weapons any unmodified hit rolls of a six will automatically wound the target now i don't advise using both of these stratagems at the same time because one kind of cancels out the other if you're automatically wounding then you're not going to be able to wound with a roll of a six because you've already automatically wounded so don't use them at the same time but you've got the option of either one of them. Now just to give you a little bit of a stat breakdown for the Necron Warriors with the Gorse Reapers, 20 of them is 40 shots. Without any buffs and bonuses, just over 26 hits, going up against Toughness 4, scoring nearly 18 wounds. Now if it was increased to Toughness 5, it's the same amount of hits, but it's now 13 and a bit wounds there. So plenty of armor saves for your opponent to make. And again, that's without any buffs whatsoever. No mine will be done, no re-rolls to the hit rolls. That's just bog standard Necron Warriors. So guys, that's the top three I've selected today, as well as the honorable mention from Ethan. Let me know down in the comments below what your top three would be in the Mephrit Dynasty. Don't forget to subscribe if you are enjoying these videos. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.